We ain't never gonna lose that fight. <laughs> who are you pointing at? No idea. Okay, it's like who are you going against? Who I'm mad at? What's up, Internet World? We're back. We're the News 19 Nerds. I'm Leroy. I'm Michael. And we're here to talk about Picard Episode 3. Ha -ha! Only, only a day after Episode 2, man. We might actually catch up. Eh, to be on time. I don't know. Yeah, don't hold that hope. I, I'm just saying. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, uh, so Episode 3. I, I had seen this one already. Because um, you told me to watch it. Yeah. You did not. I did. I watched comedy specials. Um, <laughs> but now you're caught up. Well, yep. yeah. I guess we're caught up to where everything is. Yeah, because Episode 4 comes out tomorrow. Yeah. Um... Actually tonight. Are we are we doing non spoilers? I mean spoilers? This is I mean at this point. Yeah. At this point, yeah. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> Alright. Um We finally figured out what Picard did. Man. <laughs> wow. That's when you I don't know if you guys play spades, but that's when you thought all of the other cards have been and you, you like, dropped the big joker? No, that have you so if you you played spades right mm -hmm. you know so you know like when you you think everybody's out of spades mm -hmm. and you got like that one face card and mm -hmm. you're like that's boss yeah and you're gonna take that book and, and you don't realize you didn't some, count somebody has like the six of spades yeah and you it's didn't like, count all the books <gasps> yeah oh yeah oh Picard thought he had everybody was out of spades yeah he did not think they would go woo it, it, it's this show is interesting um, oh somebody had said. In our comments, I guess they had used the F word before. So supposedly Tilly in Star Trek, Star Trek Discovery used it. Okay. And I watched Star Trek Discovery, and I'm be honest with you, I don't remember it. And mm -hmm. that, and and that's one of those things where I'm like, was it effective then? Yeah. Because it was used before. We've heard. Now I, I guess the thing is, a lot of people, some people were saying, you know, well, Kirk said, you know, certain. I'm like, the F word is a big word. Yeah. It's one of my favorite words. Starts with F. She a little Sesame Street history lesson today. Um, phonetics. Mm -hmm. uh, but when she said it to Picard, it just had more gravity to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe because it was one of the pillars of the Star Trek universe, you had the audacity to say that to yeah. JL. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I bring that up to say, in that episode, we kind of see a look at the arrogance of Jean-Luc. And I kind of feel like we get that in here, too. Because he, he almost thought that there's no way in the world they're going to go through with this when I put my career on the line. And they're like, no, nah, you ain't that important. I will say this is something that we, as humans, as employees, as whatever you are, let's say you work a job. You believe that you're important to said position. Um, and you think that you matter. This was the job telling you. You don't. One monkey don't stop no show. Yeah, we, <laughs> and, we will find somebody to replace you and quickly. That, and, and that has got, and in that instance, two things happened in that, in, in that instance. Jean-Luc Picard figured out that he was expendable. Mm -hmm. He was not, he put more importance on himself than others did. Mm-hmm. And when the chips were down, they chose to go a different route. And he thought that they would be on his side. And two, we saw what happened to the other, the little people. To when Raffi he, and, when, when yeah. he made that decision. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was a very interesting. So what we're talking about is, Jean-Luc Picard said, if you don't back my plan, I will resign. Mm -hmm. And they were like, deuces. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, give me that Starfleet communicator on the way out. Mm -hmm. And they literally was like, bye. Yeah, and it was it was interesting because that, that's like the whole basically cold open of the show before the intro starts or whatever. Mm -hmm. We we see this fallout and Jean-Luc is kind of in a state of, I can't Disbelief. believe that happened. Yeah. And he's still not really thinking the ramifications of what it means for everybody else. Because mm -hmm. Rafi is just like, this is all I had because... We see that Jean-Luc had the vineyard. He had something he could yep. fall back on. He had whatever currency or whatever he's, the notoriety and the fame for being a captain. Uh, yeah. um, Raffi's got nothing. She's still making through. She's still getting, she's, she's not where he is. Right, he she, is, has a mobile, she has a mobile home. He, pretty much. Yeah. She, has, she lives in an RV. Yeah. Whereas this is the man who piloted, or not piloted, he, who, who commanded Two versions of the Enterprise, D and E. Yeah. Their flagship Constitution class starship. The the literal literal pride 
of Starfleet. Right. And he saved the galaxy, the known universe, over and over again. So he thought, oh, they're going to back my plan. Mm -hmm. When I give them this, yeah. and Starfleet was like, hey, man, we appreciate your service. Mm -hmm. Bye. And we say this to tell all of you out there, take care of yourself. Yeah, pretty much. Because uh, let me tell you right now, I love where I work. I have no, no illusions that if I am not here today, <laughs> tomorrow, they will advertise my position. <laughs> Make no mistake. That goes for all of you out there. Remember that. Unless you own the company. Right. <laughs> if, you're, if your name ain't on the sign, and even then, Papa <laughs> John don't work for his company. See what I'm saying? Hey. How many times did Je uh, Steve Jobs get fired from Apple? Yeah, very true. The only person I think who's safe from losing his company might be Jeff Bezos. Well, the thing is, he got so much money, even if he doesn't That's what I'm saying. Like, like, unless you Jeff Bezos and a handful of other people. Right. Because you can lose your job as a president. <laughs> still be all right. You can still be all right. Right. I mean, but man, that, yeah. that whole scene was so telling mm -hmm. because it not only set up why there's a rift between Starfleet and Jean-Luc Picard. It also showed the little people. Yeah. And Michelle Heard, I felt for her. Mm -hmm. That whole opening when you see what happened, you saw what happened in the past, you fast forward to now, mm -hmm. and she's just like, I'm going to help you, even though you, you did not do right by me. She right. was hurt. She was devastated. She said that. She said, why, why didn't you check up on me? Mm -hmm. I like I went through and he and it kind of just it. It's one of those things where this show that I think is expertly doing that I think we need at this point in time. We do a lot of hero worship with athletes, stars, celebrities. And this show put some a, some grime on so, Picard. A little bit. I would say grime that. The, the measure of a man is not always the highs. Mm -hmm. You must examine the lows. Mm -hmm. And Picard is a great person in, in, in this universe. He's a, he's a hero. But that doesn't make it everything he has done has been right. right. And, and we see that even in his quest to be noble. Sometimes those decisions you make hurts other people. Mm -hmm. And he never considered... He said that. He said, I never considered that they would accept it. And she's like, look, you might be Jean-Luc Picard, but this is freaking Starfleet. Like, right. This is an organization. Because he was so confident himself. Yeah. He's like, there's no way they could accept it. Yeah. Where somebody like Raffi's like, she wouldn't even put that out there because she needs this. Not only that, she, she knew when you get that big, mm -hmm. You think the organization is predicated on your presence. Starfleet showed we don't need you. Mm -hmm. Now they may, but they didn't believe they did. Right. And they were they were willing to let him go. And I thought that was very interesting that the writers took that step because it shows us right now we're we're, we're having this reexamination of yes, Picard is great, mm -hmm. but he made a mistake here. There were probably other ways for him to handle that situation, but even if he did, even even with him doing that, he still didn't look after Rafi. Right. And we see what happened. Like she's a junkie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, she's growing a little plant. She's she's she's, she's vaping. She's vaping. I'm hey, like, okay. Hats off to the vaping industry. You survived till uh, twenty three thirty five, whatever uh, star date this is. Yeah, y'all made hey, it. Y'all figured something out. Vapors, keep the hope alive. <laughs> I'll do it. But yeah. I'm not mad at you because you it's. The future shows y'all make it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not advocating people vape, but she made it seem cool. Hey, she made it seem cool. She just and, off and put it in a little and you know what? Cool. You guys survived uh, everything else. Yeah. All the other things that went by the wayside, vaping is still there. Yeah. Um, what else big happened in the episode? Um, I, I thought that was very telling, the relationship there. I thought when you saw her with, you saw Michelle Heard with Rafi. I mean, Michelle Hurt as Rafi, uh -huh. that interaction, I thought it was very, very interesting because it was a, a definitely different contrast between how he has handled crew members before when he 
he was in charge of the Enterprise. Mm -hmm. How he was there versus now, there's a there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. And then we get to meet um, Rios. And That's the pilot? The pilot. And yeah. he was like, she told me you would give a speech. And I, I thought that was so interesting. The different, this is a show about broken people. Mm -hmm. This isn't, this isn't, it's a, no, it, it's, we always look at Star Trek as this, these great ideas, these. It's these, a utopia. It, this utopia. But this particular show is about that almost healing of one person, of, of, of oneself, to what is driving you? What, is, what, what are you going to do to fix yourself, to fix that hole? Because each one of these people we've met that are key members of this crew that Picard has put together, there's something aching that they're yearning for. Even yeah. in the bad guys, there's something that we've discovered, there's something that is driving all of them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very interesting that these, that the captain that he has picked for used to be an EXO uh, in, in Starfleet, who has left, something happened to him. Rafi, who used to be Starfleet, something happened to her. Allison Pill's character, she is dealing with pain yeah. that her life's work was used to massacre thousands of people. Yeah, and now she can't even really work on what she wants no. to work on anymore. And Picard, who is at the center of all of this, probably feels some type of way that Dodge died in his care. Mm -hmm. He didn't know Data had a daughter. He basically took himself out of the game, so to speak, and went and retired, and he's like, I shouldn't have done that. Right. And it's taken all, and all of these people have something driving them, but they're also broken people. Yeah. I think it's very interesting that we saw that in this episode. Uh, shout out to Picard looking at the captain's chair, like, no, nah. I, I, and again, you know, as for if you're if you're new to our channel or new to these videos, Leroy is a Star Trek fan. He's seen mostly most of most of it. Yeah. Uh, I I don't really know Star Trek except, except for Enterprise. Like, it doesn't count. Although, shout out to Scott Bakula, friend of the show. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> it just it, Enterprise didn't get me. Okay, I was like, okay. Uh, but yeah, I I know mostly <clears throat> Star Trek. I know I've seen a few episodes of Next Generation, but not everything. Yeah. But it was really cool to even somebody who doesn't watch it a lot. I know that meant something to me in the way that was framed of him not sitting in that chair. He saw it, he recognized it, but he's like, I'm not the captain. Yeah, and I wonder if maybe by a season's end, or by a series end, he'll be like, I'm maybe, back in the I seat. I don't know. May, may, he, might, he may never sit in that chair. Yeah, I don't know. He, he did that. And also, he also said, engage. Yes. And I was like, this that's, is cool. That's his, that's his and line. It, I know that's, that hit me, and I don't know yeah. why it hit me, because I don't watch Star Trek like that, but it still hit but me. You, but you knew it. Yeah. Now, imagine if you had watched all seven seasons, and yeah. you saw that you, like, there's somebody who's watching that show, like, it was, it was, I was like, this is cool. Every, the music was building, the shot, everything about it was really cool. I wrote my notes down, on, okay. and then I left my notebook. So I had to get my wife to take a picture of said notebook and sit it on my phone. Um, that was cool. The one thing I thought also was cool that I don't know if it's a, I, I, it's conscious, it has to be. Everybody reads. And they're reading books. Oh, yeah. The, the, the fact that, so if you remember when Allison Pill, he talked to her, she had an uh, Isaac Asimov book in her hand. Mm -hmm. And then you saw Rios with another book in And like, to, I don't know why that hit me. Because you you love to read. I do, but I, I just, the idea that even in the future, when you have tablets, whatever, you know, hollow vids. The they're still I, reading the book. They're still reading that physical copy. And I say that to say, ha! We ain't never gonna lose that fight. <laughs> who are you pointing at? No idea. Okay, it's like, who are you going who against? Who I'm mad at? Physical media never dies. Oh, it's like, who is the enemy you're pointing I at? I don't know. They know who it is. Okay. They know who they are. Whoever, in, the, in the chat, y'all let us know who the enemy is. Whoever that villain is watching this video, they're like, damn you, Leroy. I thought I was gonna get rid of books. <laughs> I thought I could get rid we of it. We thought we had it. The written word would be gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. I, I just, I, I re that really meant a lot to me. Okay. And for those people out there who like to read, who like physical media, who are not going to give in to downloading and, and everything being digital, mm -hmm. there's something to sitting down, having a book in your hand, flipping the pages, smelling the, 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 the ink on the print, and that taking your mind to that place and allowing your imagination. So to me, I thought it's a very conscious decision 
to show books and a vastly superior future when it, you're dealing with I mean we've we in this future we've made people we've literally created life and they're still reading books yeah uh, to me that was just powerful to me so cool um girls gonna be in cosplay cool cool um see so yeah, that that happened uh so bear with me my notes are it looks like scribble scrabble um we get a sense of, the th I think the biggest thing in this episode is we get a sense of what's going on with the Borg Cube. Mm -hmm. So, for those of you who are Star Trek fans, you know Q introduced Starfleet to the Borg. The Borg are, to me, they're a virus. I mean, they, they, they assimilate, they're very dangerous. We get this story that the Borg has run across a Romulan ship. Uh, they assimilated it, and something happened. Mm -hmm. That boar cube was cut off from the rest of the collective. And now we see the Romulans mining the boar cube. We go back and forth between the Romulans interviewing this woman, Ramda, uh, the Borg, uh, who have been some released. Of, some, some of the, and these were Romulans who were... Affected by the Borg, right? They're called, they were assimilated into the, the, the Borg, and they're called the Disoriented. Mm -hmm. The Borg assimilated has been released. There's something, they, other people who have been assimilated, they come back and you're able to rescue them. Uh, Picard was assimilated yeah. by the Borg. He was the cutest of Borg. Mm -hmm. uh, look, uh, um, we now know that there's something the Romulans want, the secret society... The Bajat, uh, I'm trying to remember what they're called. I have it written down. Um, as you as you look at it, it's mm -hmm. it's it's interesting to see how it seems like that secret organization hates synthetic life yes. in terms of trying to kill all synths and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But at the same time, the Borgs are some you know like their machinery. So it's weird to see them kind of take the two sides of. On the one hand, they hate synthetic life, but they're really trying to figure out what the Borg thing is. Well, I, I don't know if I wonder if they're trying to figure it out or if they're harvesting the Borg. We we know that whatever this the the, and I'm trying to remember how to pronounce it. It's the Vaja Za, za uh, But anyway, so we see Daja's sister. We see her having this interaction with this woman, and. We see the same time she's having this interaction with the woman, we're seeing Picard interview or interrogate a Romulan prisoner who tried to uh, hit another hit squad who came from Picard. Um, Side note, hold on. Shout out to whoever is the stunt double for Picard mm -hmm. when Picard flipped over that table because there's no way. How old is John Luke? How old is uh, Patrick Stewart? So we're 70? Not, we're, we're not going to age. 80? We're not I'm just saying. That. We're not going to do that. We're not, we're not going to ageism is, against. No, I, I think it's cool. But what I'm saying is there's no way he did his own stunts. I don't believe that. I don't want him to. I'm just saying shout out to the stunt double. I was like, who is this person flipping over pretending to be Picard? I Picard? personally believe Patrick Stewart could do it if he wanted to. <laughs> I don't know if we would have to. Patrick Stewart can do nothing wrong. Okay. Except leave Rafi. <laughs> <laughs> but whoever that was, uh, I like yeah. the scene overall because I think the the show is doing, whenever they do action, they do a good job of not cutting away from everything. Mm -hmm. So you kind of get a full picture of what you're seeing. It's not too many cuts in it, which I like. So even though, you know, they have to figure out a way in the fiction for Jean-Luc Picard to be able to handle these guys. And what they do is he has his two Romulans essentially on his House side. Romulans? He has his two partners on his side to take out other people. He can kind of do a little Zabon. bit. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> that's, like that. that's the guy. So, one of the things I loved about it was Picard may be a little old, but Le Picard always kept that strap. That I was mean, like, yeah, I was like, how many things you got under the table? You know why? Because Picard is always ready for a fight. He don't go <laughs> looking for it. Yeah, but he ready. He is ready for don't it. Don't come to his house. Don't, hey, don't sh hey, don't show up at Chateau Picard. Yeah. Pop, pop it off at that mouth. Yeah, it's Picard not right. will put you down. And well for you. <laughs> Son, when they old boy came through the door, they was like, I yeah. was like, yo. I was like, this is cool. I, I like was it. like, menace to society in France <laughs> <laughs> with space guns. <laughs> I was like, it's training days, fool. And uh, Allison Pill shot somebody yeah. at so, the end. I was like, okay. So the whole time, the just the, the juxtaposition of in inter interrogating this Romulan, and he mentions the word, she is the destroyer. Yeah. 
So now we realize that the Romulans are looking for something that has tied to synthetic life, that has, a tie, that has ties to the board, and there's a secret that supposedly the Vaja, the Vaja, Vaja, Vas, any, I, I, I cannot pronounce it, I cannot, if I see it, I can the pronounce it. The secret cabal organization. So there, there, there's, a secret, there's a secret so devastating that if you knew what it was, it would, it could almost destroy your mind. The, and it's probably one of the best guarded secrets mm -hmm. of the Romulan faith, mythology, as you will. The Romda didn't like that word. Mm -hmm. But we saw there's something to whatever the secret is that the Tal Shiar was willing to work together with known enemies. And there's another secret organization, like there's a seat, like the Tal, the, the, the Tal Shiar here, and there's a whole another, there's, yeah. there's a whole another layer. Yeah. And I think that's interesting to me. That's, that's very interesting to me. And we get to see a little bit more. We saw Commander O um, talk to Allison Pill. We also saw um, Lieutenant N uh, Narisa Rizzo, who was actually a Romulan. Mm -hmm. um, that part of it, I think, is... Um, it's just as interesting as seeing these relationships develop between Picard and all these different people, but in a different way, because whatever their religion is, whatever the secret is, whatever they're, they're mining the Borg for, mm -hmm. is so important that they're willing to destroy their own relief relief effort to help them to help their own people yeah they're willing to mine bore cubes they're willing to work with starfleet starfleet is willing to do whatever it takes to help them mm -hmm. yeah be and i that is just so interesting to me it's wonder before we talked about like the politics of this show in terms of them talking about government and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff and it will be interesting to see how deep this conspiracy goes, both in the Romulan mm -hmm. count Council and Starfleet government, just to see how deep it is, if the admirals are involved, you know, or whatever, I don't know. Zavash. Zatvash. 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 Whatever. Anyway, you know what we talk about. Um, that was what I thought was very interesting that we, because we had seen little things. Mm -hmm. So we saw in episode two, we saw the first time we saw Commander O. And we saw Picard speak to this admiral, and the admiral was like, man, blank you. Mm -hmm. And we saw that, and then we saw her go to Commander O. The Commander O went to Lieutenant, and she was like, man, your people are, what are y'all doing? Right. And, it really, and so, and she's stomaching this Vulcan, or so who we assume is this Vulcan. She's stomaching because whatever their plan is, it's enough that they... They're, 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 whatever it is are aligned. Mm -hmm. And then we saw Rafi saying, I told you there, there was a conspiracy. Yeah. And that conspiracy ran so deep that Starfleet had to have allowed the attack. Starfleet had to have looked the other way to the point where, going back to the original thing we talked about, John Luc Picard was so idealistic, he did not see the angles coming. Right. He didn't, he didn't look at all the angles. He didn't see, he thought, Starfleet with this was this noble organization, mm -hmm. and they are. Say what you will, the United States military or whatever, wherever you live, your military is noble. They do good things. They, there's a special forces for a reason. Yeah. There's off the book things for a reason, mm -hmm. and Starfleet has one just like anybody else. The question is, how much of that organization or those off the books, those black ops things are running the entire Starfleet. Right. How vast does this conspiracy go? Yeah. And it's all based on whatever this Zavat uh, Zat yeah. secret is. Whatever this is is so powerful, destroying universe whatever, it's so important that all of these different things will come together to keep it not only secret, but keep it so that it doesn't come to light. Right. Um, I think that's very interesting. I think it's very different because if you go back and you watch Star Trek, it kind of was, yeah, there were some other these themes, different things, but they were, they were episodic. Mm -hmm. You know, there were different things where, you know, a couple episodes here and there would be joined together. But it's like you could watch one episode and you can, you can bail. Yeah. 
So this, I think, is excuse me, going in the direction I really like. Uh, the only other thing that really stuck out to me um, was when Ramda, Ramda? Yeah, Ramda. Uh, was talking to Dodge. Uh huh. I know what you're about to say. Go about ahead. About the destroyer or whatever. I remember then, you from tomorrow. Yeah, I was like, okay. And then Dodge is like, uh, what's going on with yep. me? And she calls somebody who's her mom. Mm hmm. Well, we think it's, I mean, in, in Dodge's mind, it's her mom. Who knows what it person it's, it's is. Probably, it's probably, there's probably something built into it. Yeah. Because she just. She, she looks at it and she says some words or something. It's almost like she said some keywords or, or whatnot. And then she just passes out. I was like, interesting. So hopefully we'll get more info on exactly what's going on with this Dodge and what what sleeper she got. <laughs> oh, no. That's oh, exactly no. what she did. Yeah, she was she was. Mom out. was talking and she just whatever that code word was, those things, boom, put her yeah. to sleep. Yeah. Um, this was the first time we had seen. I could be mistaken. I believe this is the first time we see the acknowledgement of the sister, of her acknowledging Dodge and is Dodge okay. Who acknowledged? Uh, I, uh, IJ, um, uh, is, oh, now you got me. Um, the, cause there's two of them, Dodge and the, the sister, the, with the, hanging out with the board. Remember, she was talking to her mom. Okay, she hey, mentioned, are, are they both not Dodge? I thought her name was something else. I thought her name was Dodge, and I thought they didn't know about each other. No, in this episode, she asked her, how is her sister doing? Oh, right, right. She because oh, remember, yeah, yeah, remember she, okay, Rhonda yeah. said, yeah. she said, which one are you? Yeah, because she said, how is Dodge? Okay. She, and she, yeah, and yeah. So what I'm saying is, this was the first time we heard her acknowledge right. the okay. other. So what I'm, I guess my question is, we know that they know, we know that she knows about the other. Mm -hmm. Now the question becomes is, how, who, or what created them? Mm -hmm. And what is this? conspiracy have to do with them because I think it's very interesting that as she talked to her mom she did the whole mm -hmm. and then two we got the name Bruce Maddox now that's important because we've heard that a couple times so yep. far and Bruce Maddox is uh, green hold on Rafi says I'm only here till we get to free cloud mm -hmm. And she said, and he was like, why do you want to go to Free Cloud? He said, because she said, because that's where Bruce Maddox is. And there's something in that code. Because basically Picard said, look, I would love to have you on board. Here's everything that I have. Mm -hmm. She looked through it. She found some things, pieced some stuff together. She found Bruce. She says that Bruce Maddox is on Free Cloud. What I want to know is how does all, who, who created these synthetics? Mm -hmm. Are there more? And how do you... how you think do we she, got a Gemini Man situation? I don't think Gemini Man, but and more or less like, how did she know that information about the Borg Cube and the fact that the Romulans were assimilated and that Borg got cut off from the rest of the collective? Because you saw she's talked to uh, Narek, uh -huh. uh, where she was like, I'm, I, must have learned, I must have read this. Or, you know, what, it, it, There's something there. Yeah. So that would be very interesting. And... When you're talking Borg, got to talk about Jerry Ryan. <laughs> we, know she, we know she's in the several episodes. We know, so, seven, seen her. so seven and nine's got to show up sooner or later. Yeah. So that's why I was like, this is, now it's starting to get the ball rolling where you're asking all these questions and all these different things. I have to say that I, I was a little hesitant about this show only because I wanted to know, like, how do you, how do you tell the story of, keep telling the story of Jean-Luc in, in the Star Trek. Like, what, what what else could he bring to this character, and why would he come back? Because mm -hmm. Patrick Stewart ain't hurt for money. Right. The dude is doing well. So why would he come back to this character after so many years? And this story does sound very interesting to the point where you're like, oh, this is pretty good. Yeah. I'm, I can see why he wanted to come back. Because yeah. now I'm, I'm, in, I'm invested in this conspiracy and whatever's going on, and I want to see how these people fit how they find these things that are that are inside them are yearning to get out will they be satisfied with the answer because you know when you're looking for you, it's like you 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 know you've been thinking about eating something all day mm -hmm. and you finally get it and you're like mm -hmm. yeah yeah is it going to be like that yeah i don't know we will we will see in the next few episodes what's going to pop off uh that's our review of episode three 
you can always find us here on YouTube. But in addition to YouTube, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, WTX.com. Like, comment, subscribe for more shenanigans like this. And we're out. Engage. Engage.